Hey guys, I just want to take one hot second to appreciate the nice comments under the last video. It really means a lot. I swear, uh, soon enough this thing will get replaced by this thing because uh, summer is coming. Um, anyways, in this video we're gonna get into React U-State and how it works. So it's really not a science, it's not that hard, but there are a couple of caveats um, that you need to be aware of um, that make U-State kind, of, uh, kind of weird to work with. We're gonna get into that, what you need to pay attention to, and then the best practices of updating React U-State. So let's dive right into it. Okay, so is U-State asynchronous or not? Uh, well, let's find out. And finding out is actually very easy. So what we can do is, for example, we can say, um, let's have the count as state. That's gonna be a number and it's gonna be initially zero. And let me disable GitHub Copilot, there we go. Okay, so we have count, set count, and then that's a number and it's zero. So let's have const increase count as a function, um, just a regular arrow function. And we're gonna invoke that through a button in our JSX here in a second. And then here, let's set count to, um, let's actually, uh, 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 yeah, let's do something that you shouldn't do. Because oftentimes you get told that setting state like, like this, actually that's a bit too large probably, that uh, setting state like this is not a good practice. So usually you set it differently, but I will get to that in a second. And then we're gonna set count uh, to plus one again. So it's zero at the start, then we're setting it to one, and then we're setting it to two, right? And we are gonna do that at the press of a button. That is of type button, and it just says increase count. There we go, and we also need to link the on click on that button, so that's gonna be increase count. Okay, and let's start up that server. There we go, and um, we can go into Firefox and open that. Once it loads, no, we don't want that, and let's go to our local host 3000. And take a look, we just have a button, and we also probably want to log the count, right? So we're gonna log out the count right here. Okay, so whenever we press the button, then in our console, it will log out the uh, state. And let me put the console, wait, how do I do that? Aha, doctorate, there we go. Okay, let me zoom in for you. Okay, so whenever we click the button, we are gonna update the state one, two, and then logging the count, right? Well, let's see what happens. Let's press the button. Wait, why is that zero? As you can see, the state is the zero. Interesting. Okay, so what is happening? Well, we are setting the state twice, but um, the state is kind of asynchronous. So um, to answer the, the initial question of the video, it's kind of asynchronous. Why is it only kind of asynchronous? Well, we could mark this function as asynchronous and then try something like await set count, right? But we can already see, because it's underlined, a weight has no effect on this type of expression. But still, we can try saving that, increase the count. We still get zero though. So, okay, how about we remove um, the count plus one, because when we're setting state, we get the previous state as the first argument, and then, uh, then we can return whatever we uh, want to set the state to. So let's duplicate that down increasing the state by um, two uh, with a good practice. What we had before was bad practice. Um, we can save that, reload the page, and then increase count. We still get zero. Interesting. That is very, very weird. So what is happening under the hood? Well, essentially, we are setting the state and setting the state here, um, and they are being batched, right? So um, whenever we set the state, then the virtual DOM is being compared to what we uh, currently have um, as the React component. And when the DOM is different to the virtual DOM, then and only then the actual DOM gets updated because that's quite an expensive operation. So these states get batched um, into one, pretty much. And because they are kind of asynchronous, we can't await them, and they haven't happened when we log out the count. Um, so how about we move the console log to up here and see what happens, reload the page, increase count, and now we can see we get two. 
Okay, because when the first uh, when the component first renders, we get the zero, right? The component renders when we when we load the page, all this gets rendered to the DOM, and the console log is um, like this one is being logged out. Then whenever we click the button, the um, so we click the button, these two get batched together, and then one simultaneous call well, not really simultaneous, but in one call, these two get batched together and executed together. So React notices, okay, we want to increase the count by one, and then we want to do the same thing again. So let's just increase it by two, render that to the DOM, and then save one re-render from that. And then the re-render happens when these are set, and then the console log happens again because the state updated, and the whole component re-renders again. That is why we can see the zero first and then the two second. Okay, um, how about we want to force the state to update synchronously though? Uh, can we do that? And the answer is yes, we can actually do that. And uh, the way we do that is with something called um, flush. Wait, where do we get that from? Oh, okay, so we get that from React DOM. But be careful when using flush sync. So what it allows us to do is update the state synchronously. However, um, if you're importing it, as you can see, it's a very large dependency that we get from React DOM. And also, we shouldn't redo it. It's not really a best practice. Now you might be asking, uh, fair enough, if this is not good practice, then why did they implement it? Why would you ever do it? And the answer is, in some cases, it can save you um, another use effect, right? So if you update your state right here and then want to listen to that change in a use effect because you need to await the state to update um, before you can make changes to it, so you rely on the new state, um, then you would normally use a use effect, but you could also in some cases use the flush sync instead. Let's see what it does though. So in the flush sync, as you can see, it's a higher order function um, and we can pass it a callback. So whatever happens inside the flush sync is batched as well, um, but it's only batched within this scope, right? So if we were to wrap both of them in a flush sync, then they would not be batched. Um, so we are executing everything that is in this callback, batching all of those. So we could update it multiple times and these will all be batched because they are in one flush sync. However, multiple flush syncs will not be batched together. So that means we are essentially forcing the DOM to update after this one. So in here, the um, DOM is updated already before executing the second flush sync. So we are updating the DOM and the state synchronously. Um, with a caveat being that we are still batching within one flush sync. So if everything goes to plan, then we are setting the state sync, um, like we are batching these four together, which means the state will be four. And then in another render, the state will be five, right? So in the console, we see we should see zero, four, and five. And um, let's see what happens. So we have the zero, then we have the four and then we have the five. Okay, so that makes sense. So we are batching all of this flush sync together. Then the DOM is updated because this is a synchronous execution of whatever's in the callback. And then we are setting the state again. Essentially, um, not uh, well, that means that we don't have to rely on a use effect um, to handle any uh, side effects if we want. And there are some examples, um, I believe, in the um, documentation that were from Dan Abramov, as far as I know. Uh, I, I don't see them here. But uh, be aware, if you're using Flush Sync, it can significantly, significantly hurt performance and um, may force uh, the suspense boundaries to go back to their fallback state, which you usually um, don't want, um, except if you're handling the suspense really well. Um, I, I guess then it's fine. But um, yeah. It, it's a last resort and should be avoided as in the docs. Um, I just wanted to mention to you that the option exists and that's pretty much it. And I want to touch on one last point in this video. So um, if you've noticed in the beginning of the video, I set the state like the, oh, well, <laughs> we didn't log it out to the console, but we are going to say set count and then count plus one. And you'll see this um, in React, uh, I, I wouldn't say somewhat regularly, but with uh, new programmers, this can sometimes uh, happen. And it, it's not always bad. Like this is not always bad practice, but in some rare occurrences, it can lead to bugs in your application. 
So I want, I want to show you the difference of what happens. So we are setting the count um, plus one and then we're setting it plus one again whenever we click the button, right? So let's save that. Let's go back to the application. And as you can see, even though we are setting the count plus one twice from zero, so zero, one, and then two, it still logs out the one. And that is odd behavior that shouldn't happen, right? Why is that? Because these are batched together in both of them, the count is gonna be zero. So essentially, we are saying set count zero plus one, set count zero plus one. In both cases, we are setting the count to one. And because there is no difference in these two calls, nothing changes and it's set to one in the, in the end. Like in here, count is set to one. And that's what's happening. These are batched together. They're both setting the same thing. That's why the count is one. Whereas if we do the following, receiving the previous state that we had as the first argument, and then setting the previous uh, plus one, then we can also do that again. Um, and that'll work. So we can save that, go back to the uh, page. So we have zero right now. Then we click increase count and now it works properly. That is the reason why having something like count plus one is not the ideal way to go. Because in here we are setting the count previous and then previous um, plus one. So essentially that would both be zero, right? So this is what we're doing. Well, uh, syntactically that might look a bit weird, but we are receiving zero as the previous and then setting zero plus one. And um, that actually gets propagated to the next set state. So in here we are already receiving one as the first one and then setting the count to one plus one, which is two. That is why this works, but this approach that we had earlier, um, this, this one uh, doesn't work. And that is pretty much all there is to say with state. If you really want to avoid the flush sync, uh, but rely on the new state, then you could uh, by all means uh, use something like a use effect where you are listening to the um, count. And if if the count is, I don't know, equal to two, then you'll console, oops, then you'll um, console log something out like uh, <laughs> fizz buzz or whatever. Um, it doesn't really matter. That is how you could avoid a flush sync, but you could also um, like in like the op do the opposite and um, avoid the use effect with a flush sync in some cases, but it's a huge dependency that you normally um, want to avoid. I just wanted to show you all the possibilities and the best practices there are to setting state. I think that's, uh, that's pretty much all there is to say. I don't want to make like a huge science out of this because it really isn't setting state is uh, not that hard, but it's a very uh, essential part of writing good React code. Um, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. That's all there is to say. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Have a good one and bye bye.